Welcome to McLaren Lapeer Region's Pre-Surgical Readiness Program. This program is designed to help surgical patients identify key areas which help optimize personal health while preparing for surgery. These areas include diet and nutrition, breathing and physical exercise enhancement, infection prevention, prescription and laboratory needs, and support person roles. McLaren Lapeer Region has many systems in place to keep you safe throughout your surgical experience. By partnering with us, there are just a few important steps you can take to help improve your overall health and surgical outcome. Preparing for your surgery. Do not make any other plans for the day you are having surgery. Follow the directions regarding eating and drinking that were given to you. When instructed not to eat, this includes gum, candy, mints, water, tea, and coffee. It is in your best interest to stop smoking prior to surgery. If this is not possible, at least cut down on your smoking and do not smoke the day of your surgery. Arrive at the hospital at least one and a half hours before your surgery. Do not wear contact lenses. If it is absolutely necessary to wear them, bring a storage case as they will need to be removed. Do not wear makeup or nail polish. Leave valuables such as rings, watches, earrings, pocketbooks, wallets, and money at home. Make arrangements to have someone drive you home after the surgery and be with you at home. Wear comfortable loose-fitting clothing, shoes, and socks. Your family may drop you off at the front door of the hospital and proceed to park. If you are an outpatient surgery patient, you will be taken back to the outpatient department. Your family can meet you there. Our staff will prepare you for your surgery and take you to the operating room. While you are in surgery, your family needs to remain in the hospital. We will have them wait in the surgical waiting area located near the lobby. Make sure you have arrangements made for transportation and care at home. For example, have someone ready to stay with you and have all necessary supplies available such as food, drinks, medications, and wound care needs. Before going home, you and your support person or persons will be given specific home care instructions. Make sure you understand the directions and treatment plan you are being given. If you do not understand, speak up and let our staff know you need clarification on the information and or instructions you've been given. Physical exercise before surgery. The more fit and active you are before your surgery, the faster you will recover from your surgery. Physical activity allows muscles, bones, and joints to become stronger while allowing for tissue repair and rebuilding. Without physical activity, our muscles become tight and weak. A brisk walk increases your intake of oxygen, strengthens your heart to pump more blood, improves circulation, and lowers blood pressure. Walking also slows development of arthritis, slows loss of bone mass and osteoporosis, and tones your muscles gently. Walking reduces stress, helps keep a positive outlook, can make you feel younger, and can help you sleep more deeply and restfully. Walking is a good form of cardiovascular exercise. A walking program is designed to help you increase your endurance gradually and to strengthen your heart and lungs. Consider the following guidelines in establishing your walking routine. Pick a convenient time to walk and stick to that time. Walk on level ground. Walk continuously without rests, if possible. The duration of the walk is more important than the intensity. Longer is better than faster. Walk at an even pace. Let your arms swing. Do not carry anything. Wear comfortable shoes and clothing. If you experience fatigue, shortness of breath, or dizziness, rest and decrease the amount of walking the next day. Avoid extremes of weather. Avoid exercising immediately following a big meal. Please refer to your surgical kit for the handout, which contains helpful tips for your walking regimen. A Borg scale of perceived exertion has been included for your use. Also, remember to properly hydrate yourself before and after any exercise program. It is recommended to keep a water bottle handy to prevent dehydration. Drink one pint of water before you start walking and another pint after you cool down. Also, remember to have a drink of water every 20 minutes or so while you exercise. Note, for patients who may be on fluid restrictions for various health concerns, please check with your physician for specific fluid instructions. Breathing exercises. 
This video will show you how to use your incentive spirometer. The first time you use your incentive spirometer, you'll need to expand the tubing and connect it to the outlet on the right side of the base. Sit upright in a chair or in bed. Hold the incentive spirometer at eye level. Exhale slowly. Put the mouthpiece in your mouth and seal your lips tightly around it. Take a slow, deep breath in through your mouth. Remember, you must breathe in through your mouth, not your nose. As you inhale deeply, you will see the piston rise on the left side. While the piston rises, the indicator on the right should move upwards. It should stay in between the two arrows. If the indicator doesn't stay between the two arrows, it means you are breathing either too fast or too slow. Try to get the piston as high as you can while keeping the indicator between the two arrows. When you get the piston to reach as high as you can, Hold it for three to five seconds, then exhale normally. Let the piston fall all the way back to the bottom. Now rest. You should do this 10 times an hour while you're awake. Try to get the piston to the same level each time you do the exercise. After each time you use the incentive spirometer, give three deep coughs. <coughs> This will help clear the secretions from your lungs, even if you're not coughing anything up. If you're not able to finish your breaths, take a break. Put the marker at the level you reached. This will be your goal next time. Take 10 breaths per hour using your incentive spirometer. This will help prevent pneumonia and other complications after surgery. Smoking cessation. Smoking increases your chance of developing pneumonia and breathing difficulty after surgery. Smoking also slows wound healing. Stopping smoking prior to surgery will make your surgery safer and could improve your surgical recovery. If you need help, please refer to your surgical kit for contact information for our pulmonary rehabilitation coordinator. Nutrition. Good nutrition is a key component in the recovery process before and after surgery. Healthy eating will promote wound healing. The following are some general guidelines to meet your nutritional goals. Eat a variety of foods within each basic food group, including fruits, vegetables, grains, milk, meat, and beans. Eat three meals a day in addition to healthy snacks. Increase consumption of lean meat such as chicken, turkey, or fish. Meat includes protein that will help in your healing process. Your body will require increased protein following surgery. Beans are also an excellent source of protein. Consume six to eight cups of water or other fluids every day or as directed by your physician. Recommended fluids include water, low-fat milk, juices, etc. Avoid beverages high in sugar such as sodas and colas if possible. Beverages including alcohol and caffeine should be avoided as well. Increase intake of fruits and vegetables. Limit intake of foods high in sugar and fat. Reduce your intake of foods and drinks which are high in sodium. In addition to eating healthy foods, an oral nutritional supplement can maintain or improve nutritional status. Consuming an oral nutritional supplement such as Ensure, Boost, or Carnation Instant Breakfast twice a day for five days prior to surgery can help reduce your risk of infection and promote healing. If you have diabetes, consider drinking Glucerna Shake or Boost Glucose Control. Infection Control and Prevention Hand Hygiene The single most important way to prevent the spread of infections is by frequent hand washing. For visibly soiled hands, wash with soap and water. Wet hands first with water, apply soap product, and rub hands together vigorously for at least 15 seconds, covering all surfaces of the hands and fingers. Rinse hands with soap and warm water, then dry thoroughly with a disposable towel. 
use towel to turn off faucet. When hands are not visibly soiled, an alcohol-based hand rub may be used. Apply product to palm of one hand and rub hands together, covering all surfaces of hands and fingers until hands are dry. Ask that hospital staff clean their hands before treating you and ask visitors to clean their hands too. This is the single most important way to protect yourself in the hospital. All caregivers should clean their hands before treating you. Alcohol-based hand cleaners are more effective at removing most bacteria than soap and water. Pre-surgical skin preparation. Both the night before and the morning of surgery, wash your hair with regular shampoo and body with an antibacterial soap. Rinse off these products completely. Wash your entire body from your neck to your toes, including groin areas. Once finished, pat yourself dry with a fresh, clean towel. Do not use lotions, creams, powders, or perfumes after your shower. Dress in freshly washed clothing and bedding if possible. On the day of surgery, all patients will be cleansed with antibacterial wipes and decolonized with nasal swabs at the hospital. This ensures all patients have received the appropriate skin preparation prior to the surgical procedure. Medications, Prescriptions, Lab Tests If prescribed antibiotics by your doctor, take them as directed. Don't take half doses or stop before you complete your prescribed course. Ask your doctor if medications such as stool softeners or medication to prevent nausea and vomiting will be needed after surgery. It is helpful to get the prescription and have it filled prior to your surgery so that you do not have to stop on your way home. For our patient's convenience, McLaren Lapeer Region has a retail pharmacy located in the hospital lobby where pharmacy staff can fill these prescriptions. All preoperative labs should be completed in a timely manner, generally a week prior to surgery. This will give your health professionals the tools to make sure any abnormal results are addressed and corrected, if possible, prior to surgical intervention. What to bring to the hospital? Any physician's orders you may have, list of medications and dosages, or your medication bottles, list of all allergies, any guardianship papers you may have, any advanced directive or living will you may have. If you will be staying the night in the hospital, pack only essential items such as toilet articles, dentures, and eyeglasses. Everyone at McLaren Lapeer Region would like to thank you for choosing our hospital for your health care needs. Please feel free to contact us with any questions or concerns you may have regarding your upcoming procedure.